Welcome to the Centre Sud. Montreal's Centre Sud was once known as the Molasses Quarter and for centuries was an active working class neighborhood. Centre Sud is just two steps from downtown Montreal, the Quartier des Spectacles, Chinatown, and Montreal's Old Port. Located in the Ville Marie borough, the region has a lot to offer to new families. The area has seen a lot of changes over the past few years new condo developments, demolition of closed down factories the establishment of new green spaces, new sports installations. With metro stations, parks and gardens, social services, new indoor pools, dozens of organizations, businesses, performance spaces and galleries, the area is clearly heading in a promising direction that's favorable for the new residents. In terms of education, the Montreal School Board has been investing in the neighborhood over the past several years, not just financially, but also in terms of human resources and materials. Centre Sud offers five primary schools and one secondary school. By working together as the campus Centre Sud, the schools are able to offer a distinct flavor of education in the neighborhood. For example, saint Anselme offers a dramatic art stream, Champlain offers music, Jean-Baptiste Meilleur cooking, nutrition and health, Garnou multimedia and communications, and finally, Margaret Bourgeois offers sports. Pierre Dupuis High School allows students to continue exploring their specific interests, all while remaining in their neighborhood. Pierre Dupuis students also have the chance to study in the first cyber school in the Montreal School Board. Today we will join a family for a regular school day to discover how the neighborhood school system works. We'll learn what students do in the classrooms, at recess and at lunchtime. We'll also discover the way schools communicate with families. We'll finish by showing you some of the resources available in your neighborhood. First off, each school works off of their own academic calendar. The school year runs from the end of August to the end of June. In the general education system, students have 180 class days, along with 20 pedagogical days. Parents are responsible for keeping their children at home, signing them up for daycare, or enrolling them in an activity at a community center. The same goes for March break. The goal of this week off for students is to give them a bit of a break before the last stretch of the school year. It usually takes place the first week of March. Now let's pick a regular school day at random and discover what the daily life of a Quebec student looks like. Waking up. Breakfast and the lunch box. After waking up, let's head to the table. It's important to eat a healthy breakfast. What better way than to share this with the whole family? When preparing your child's lunchbox, don't forget that you must absolutely avoid any food containing peanuts. If your child suffers from allergies, make sure to inform the school. Make sure that he's aware that it's hazardous to trade or share food with his classmates. To keep the food fresh, add an ice pack. You can consult the Canadian Health Guide for tips to ensure that your child is eating healthy and nutritiously. Clothing. Quebec's climate has four very distinct seasons, even if sometimes we experience all of them in the same week. It's therefore important to dress accordingly. Students play outside at recess and during lunch. Make sure to provide them with the adequate gear. Getting to school. There are several ways to get to school. If the student lives nearby, he can walk there. If he is young, we suggest walking with him. If the child lives further away, he can take the school bus. You should arrive at the bus stop five minutes before the pickup time indicated on the school bus map. It's very important that your child arrives on time. Daycare. 
Daycare service is available from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. for children whose parents work, as well as during lunchtime. During this time, we'll do a few activities with the children. In the evening, once school finishes at 3 p.m., teachers will watch students whose parents cannot come and pick them up because they are at work. We'll have a few activities for them. It may be board games or some crafts. And once it's nice outside and warms up, we'll take the children outside to play so that they're not always stuck inside. We discourage playing video games. We also make sure that we play group games to help students adapt more easily in interacting with each other. From the welcome class to regular program. When a student does not speak French joins us, they begin in a welcome class. This is a class with fewer students and where teaching is more one-on-one. -on -one. Usually these students will pass 10 months in a welcome class after which they join the regular program. Usually 10 months is enough. Children are often surprising and learn French very quickly. At the same time, they could also use another 10 months. And that's not a problem. They can stay another 10 months in the welcome class to improve their comprehension and to continue learning French. In the welcome class, a student will pass most of their time with their professor. Mostly, he will learn to interact in French and to integrate into his cultural milieu. So it's mostly French that is taught during these first 10 months in the welcome class. Your child will also do mathematics. This is in order to make sure everyone is at the same level, but also to learn mathematical terms in French, which he will use once he begins the regular program. On top of classes with his teacher, he will also have classes with specialized teachers. He'll take art, physical education, music, and sometimes even drama classes. Each period lasts 50 to 60 minutes. Once the teacher believes the student is ready to pass into the regular program, he will need to join the grade appropriate for his age. At times, it is possible that this is a lower level depending on how his learning progresses. He'll continue to learn French and math in the regular program, but other subjects will be added. For example, there will be civics course, as well as ethics and religious studies. He will also learn English as a second language. Recess. There are three breaks during the day. Lunch hour and two recess periods. One recess is before lunch, the other after. Students use this time to burn off some energy. Parent school communication. How can you contact the school? Either by a telephone call, talking to the secretary or leaving a message on the answering machine or via the student's agenda. The agenda is the preferred way for schools to communicate with students' families. It's very important that parents check their child's agenda daily. From time to time, they will find a note from the teacher or, more regularly, messages from the school. It's by reading the student's agenda that parents find out about the special events at school. This could be exhibits, shows for children, parent-children workshops, conferences, or parent-teacher meetings. The agenda also contains other useful information, including the code of conduct. The school's code of conduct contains all the rules that allow students to interact in a pleasant and secure environment. It's important that all parents know the code of conduct, support it, and encourage their children to follow it. When should you contact the school? First, each time that your child is late or absent from class. In these cases, you should call the school and either speak with the secretary or leave a message on the answering machine, indicating your child's name, the name of his teacher, and the reason for the absence or late arrival. It's also necessary to contact the school each time you change phone number or address. Whether it's a change for both or just one of the child's parents, you must realize that this information is necessary in case of an emergency where we need to reach the most important people in the child's life. 
Next, you can also contact the school when you need any information or if you have any questions or concerns about your child's education or his well-being at school. We strongly suggest that you start by contacting your child's teacher. The teacher is the primary point person who can then direct you to any other resources if necessary. Meeting after the first report card. The first report card is given out to parents at a meeting in early November. The meetings last around 15 to 20 minutes where parents will meet with the teachers to discuss their child, what he has learned since the beginning of the year, how he has acted in class, and how he interacts with his classmates. It's at this meeting that parents can question and find out what they can do to help their child succeed in school. You are allowed to bring your child to the meeting. Should you require translation because you don't speak the language, the school may be able to provide a translator. If not, feel free to bring someone with you who can translate. To get the most out of this meeting, please be sure to prepare in advance. For example, ask your child what he likes about school, what he finds difficult, what questions he would have for his teacher, etc. And please don't hesitate to contact the teacher at any time if you feel it's necessary. The school's mission is to work hand in hand with you. Lunch hour. At lunch hour, your child is allowed to return home. If he stays at school, he can either eat his own lunch or the lunch that is served. If your child remains at school, you'll need to pay lunchtime monitor fees. Teaching methods in the welcome class. We do little lecturing in this class. This means I'm rarely standing in front of the students, explaining things or speaking to them. Most of the time, the students are the most active people in the classroom. In class, we'll often do workshops. Students can work at their own speed in the class during workshops, which will often be done in groups. We often use cooperative teaching. This means that the students form a team and each of them has a role. This helps prepare them in a small way for the workforce, where they will often be asked to work in teams. We also often work with computers. We'll use interactive whiteboards as well as computers in classroom. These projects can last a few hours, sometimes a week, or sometimes even a month. Classroom life revolves around these projects. <laughs> Even if we primarily teach French in the welcome class, we will also work on math. Sometimes we'll do science projects as well. Science experiments can last several weeks. Right now we're working on horticulture with the students. We also organize a lot of projects for interaction with the neighborhood. Since students need to develop their French, we try to make sure they participate in real-world situations where they need to speak French and express themselves to others. We'll go on field trips in the city. We take walks around the town, especially in our neighborhood. We also interact quite a bit with community organizations. As you can see, school life and teaching in our neighborhood is a little different from what you may see in other schools. Homework and Assignments It's important to realize, first off, that homework and assignments are meant to help cover skills your child has already acquired. It's an exercise that allows the student to practice what he has already learned at school. Students will always already know the topics covered in his homework and assignments. It's the teacher who gives homework and assignments to the students. It is therefore the student's responsibility to complete this work and who must do the learning themselves. It isn't up to the parents to teach the children. Parents do have an important role to play, however. They have an indirect responsibility when it comes to homework and assignments. What is their role? It's to ensure that their child dedicates time to schoolwork in the evening. So turn off both the TV and the radio. Set your child up in a small, calm area with good lighting where he will be able to concentrate. The parent's job is to encourage the child to do his homework and to congratulate him when it's done. In short, it is teachers who teach, 
students who learn and do the work, and the parents' role is to support and encourage their children in their academic life. So that's the role of a parent, to support and to encourage. Directed studies and help with homework. There are measures in place to help students who need to move forward in their assignments or homework in a calm, friendly and supportive environment. These students, at times, are not able to find the time to do this work at home. That's why they're able to do it at school. Directed studies can be carried out in large groups or alone, accompanied by an adult, depending on the needs of the student. Parents sometimes don't have the necessary tools to support their children in their work. The role of an adult supervisor is to take the time needed to help the students in any way they can. The school board offers several services for children who may, from time to time, demonstrate behavioral or learning difficulties, or difficulties adapting in the classroom setting. These services include psychology, psychoeducation, speech therapy, or remedial education. If you have any concerns or notice any difficulties in your child's learning, we suggest you discuss it first with the child's teacher. The teacher will then follow up with the appropriate personnel. The school's dental hygienist. The school's dental hygienist likes to see all students healthy and cavity free. To make sure they are, we teach the children about good oral hygiene. I show them how to brush their teeth and how to maintain a healthy, nutritious diet. What do I do with the children? I meet them to do dental checkup. After that, if the child has any dental problems, I refer them to the dentist or I do a follow-up. I also show them how to properly brush their teeth. It is a very important skill in order to prevent illnesses, including cavities. I'm always available to answer parents' questions, either in person or by telephone. The school nurse. At the start of the year, I collect health files with the participation of all students to see who has allergies and to also see what vaccination students have received. I do a blood test with each student as well. We'll also do a check-in in the welcome class because vaccines often aren't the same in different countries or follow the same vaccination calendar. I'll also sometimes refer you to the San Justin Hospital in order to translate your records. When I'm at the hospital, I'll respond to any emergency. And if I'm not there, there will be a staff who are able to respond to emergencies. These staff people will be well identified and there will be two or three at each school. They will also refer students to hospitals or CLSCs if necessary. The social worker. First off, I have the role to inform, inform families about resources in the neighborhood, but also about services they can access at the CLSC. I also play a role in disease prevention. I organize workshops and classes on different subjects, bullying, healthy lifestyle habits, etc. There's clearly several topics we could cover. We decide which ones are necessary on a class-by-class -class basis. Often, this will be done alongside school personnel, CLSC staff, the dental hygienist, or the nurse. My main role at the school is to help families or children facing difficulties or students with specific needs. At that point, we'll meet with the family and their children to evaluate their needs in order to be sure we offer the best and more appropriate services. From then on, we'll do a follow-up with children one-on-one, -on -one, with their families, and often all together. Out-of-school activities. Since you've just moved into our neighborhood, I'd like to tell you about some of the new possibilities it offers. First, we have many sports facilities in the neighborhood. We have five public swimming pools, all of them free of charge during the free swim periods. There are also tennis courts, basketball courts, and soccer fields that you can take advantage of. 
We also have many cultural hubs, including neighborhood libraries. Once you are a library member, you can access the entire collection. This includes books, magazines, and CDs. There are even CDs to help you learn different languages. There are also internet stations if you need to do research. Libraries also offer a quiet spot for your children to do their homework. You'll find several theaters and museums in the area as well. There are also many resources for new immigrants who have recently moved to the neighborhood. Whether it's for the job hunt, looking for housing, help with food, or to make new friends, organizations working in all these different areas can offer you a place to meet. To end off, I wanted to make sure to let you know about youth and family groups in the neighborhood. It's these organizations that follow up when school's out during both the summer or spring break. There are also day camps. It's generally the same community organizations who organize children's activities throughout the summer. They more or less following the same schedule as schools. Activities run from morning until evening with childcare services after. It's a great, fun, and safe way for your children to spend their summer. Bedtime. Learning a new language can be very demanding for a young person. A good night's sleep is therefore very important so that they're in shape once they're back at their desks. Help them get ready for sleep by reading them a bedtime story. You are now ready to start an adventure in a school in Quebec.